it's interesting in this community, I find that the more guests I have on, I ask this question, like, what are you planning on in the future? Or what, what's your vision of the future? And oftentimes, people don't have exactly a clear cut idea of what the future is going to look like. But one thing I notice universally in this community is it's not going to stop. Whatever it is, there's no intention of slowing down or stopping. It's a grind. It's a lot of work. And nobody cares because this message has to get out and we're going to keep pushing it. It's, it's the carnivore thing and because uh, we stumbled across this. So there's an excitement about, you know, uh, spreading, how, spreading this message that we wish we would have received a very long time ago. And then you couple that with social media where the harder you work, the more your influence, impact, income, everything. So it's kind of hard to take a day off. Because, you know, like if I work today, I can do this much more, you know, so it's, it's a double whammy. Yeah, definitely. And we're always, again, so focused on the future and getting this message out. We're always looking in front of us and how much work we have. I love what you said, though. It, sometimes we need to look back and recognize how far we've all come, how, how much we've done and be proud and give ourselves that grace to know that yeah, we're growing. We've got a long ways to go, but at least we've, we've, we've grown as much as we have so far. Well said. Well yeah. said. It's amazing. And, and just yesterday on social media, I just saw another article, this by Time Magazine, that was talking about how ultra processed foods are good for people <laughs> and we need to get them out. It's just ridiculous how crazy this message is. And those, those goddamn, it's the headlines. The headlines are going to grab so much attention and people are going to say, like they always do, I knew keto was stupid. I knew carnivore was dumb. It was going to kill me of a heart attack. I'm fine eating the processed crap at the grocery store. It's mm -hmm. absolutely absurd. I think... Anytime you're second guessing yourself, go online, look at, there are very quick videos that show you the whole process of how seed oils are manufactured. Just, just take two, three minutes out of your day. I made sure I showed this to my students at Miami Dade College when I would teach nutrition. And even at the University of Miami, I would show them the videos. It's a, the, I think probably the first one that shows up is a three minute video. Everybody should watch that. Everybody should see the I think what, like a 50 step process and then they add deodorization to mask the horrendous smell of the oil. A gazillion chemicals are added to it. And then, and that's considered a health food, really. It's and that's not... found in all the ultra processed foods, you know, Yeah. anything that's processed, let alone ultra processed. Look at the ingredient list, probably the second, third, like somewhere on the ingredient list is going to have a seed oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, corn oil, peanut oil, all of those. We have no business eating those foods. They're not foods. They were engine lubricants. That was their intended um, purpose when they first yep. came on market. Yep. No, I, I, yeah, it's crazy. I'll tag that video again. I think we're thinking of the same one. It's from the show, uh, How It's Made, Canola Oil. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's the most tagged video we've ever had on our show. I put it on almost every episode, it seems like. Right. It's so disgusting. It's yeah. gross. People yeah. eat it. It's in everything. I, yeah, I, it's just like basic education. There's no person with basic common sense that can watch that and come up with the conclusion that, oh, yeah, seed oils are fine and, and even healthier than animal foods or animal fats. No way. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, right. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's so bizarre. Um, okay, so when we talked two years ago, you told us your personal story, which I love. Um, today, I want to talk to you about dopamine and the vagus nerve and all kinds of cool stuff that you're exploring. I did want to go back a little bit on your story and ask you yeah. what it was like um, because you had found the carnivore diet. You'd found it super helpful for your own health, but you were still in the university and college system teaching students. And so I, I, we talked briefly about it last time, but I didn't want to pass it up. Like, what was it like to be in an institution? W were you supposed to teach a certain curriculum and you'd sneak those videos in where you could? Or like, how did you manage that? I think um, because I had zero supervision, I managed to last as long in that system. Like, no, but I would give them the syllabus and the syllabus had what they wanted me to put on it. <laughs> but on the first day of school, I'd be like, yeah, you don't have to purchase this book. I'm going to give you all of my PowerPoints and everything. And um, it was like full blown what I believed, you know, and I mean, there are certain basics that you, you, you have to give them. Of course, you, you want them to make sure to, that they're going to graduate because a lot of them are like a nursing or other health uh, field. So 
there are basics that don't change. You know, carbs are, you know, the, the different types of carbs, the fibers of form of carbs, you know, different types of proteins, amino acids, which one essential. Like, they're just basic stuff. But then once they go into the, um, R, the DRIs or the, the RDAs, like how, what percent of your calories should come from carbs, proteins, and fats, this is when it's like, okay, this is what the textbook says, but here's the truth, you know? So I would give them both schools of thought. But the cool thing is I would do like a flipped classroom. So I would give them the recordings of the lectures. I had recorded them once in my life. I couldn't do it over and over again. <laughs> recorded them once and I would just give it to them to my students. And then every time we would meet, it would be all collaborative, me just basically answering their questions. And so it was all the time, the whole semester would be um well if you recommend a carnivore diet well what about fiber what about heart disease and so they really received an insane in-depth um education on real nutrition and that also helped my sanity because i couldn't be feeling hypocritical you know the teaching the wrong stuff i wouldn't have lasted i would have quit decades ago yeah that's so cool. You were able to like infiltrate the system and get our, get our message out there. It's yeah. funny. Um, we work for a large corporation, a big gym, my wife and I. And when we found ketogenic diets to be really helpful, we, we had a weight loss contest that we were supposed to execute from the company. And mm -hmm. we kind of did the same thing. We, nobody, we didn't have a lot of supervision where we were. And so we would go to diet doctor, print out meal plans back when diet doctor was something I recommended to people. And we would give people these low carbohydrate meal plans and say, forget what the company's telling you. Yeah. We're going to teach you this stuff, eat these meals. And the success rate was tremendous to the point yeah. of like our job satisfaction was so much higher. We were actually finally helping people. Right. What and why do you no longer recommend the diet doctor stuff? Uh, that's a tricky one. They, so, so diet doctor in particular has moved from being like the hub of all things low carb, like right. all the videos, meal plans. They had a meal planning um tool that was fantastic, recipes, all kinds of resources. To now they move towards a satiety per calorie kind of idea and system, um, which is more. It's based on three factors, which is um, satiety protein and hedonic factor. And they have this bizarre kind of scale that goes from one to 100. And you're supposed to find foods that combine to, to be 50 on this target. And it's literally things like um, um, certain branded foods are more satiating than Popcorn. like whole foods. Like, but yes, yes. Like Oreos are more satiating than um, certain protein. It's, it's just this weird kind of convoluted thing that it's not really scientifically proven. Mm. They tried to open things up to more people besides just low carb, I see. but they ended up kind of mess missing in my mind, missing the mark. And it's no longer something that I feel comfortable recommending for the everyday person. Mm. It's they basically optimized for weight loss, you know, cause yeah, it yeah. is true. If you fill your tummy with high volume foods, like tons of veggies and popcorn, yeah, you're not going to be able to consume tons of calories, you'll probably create that caloric deficit more easily. And if you focus on low hedonic foods, it's not going to drain your brain from dopamine and you're less likely to be craving addictive foods after that. So I can see what they're doing there. But obviously, if we're optimizing for health and if you have an autoimmune condition, or if you just want to be as healthy as you can be, that's not going to be helpful. It's such a slippery slope. It's so easy to go down that hole, you know, and be like, well, you know, popcorn isn't so bad. Now you're eating grains every day and now the skin's breaking out and, you know. Yeah, that's that's the problem. That's my problem I have with it is like, can this be helpful for somebody just coming off the street? Is it better than standard American? Absolutely. But yeah, where this was like a simple resource that I could send somebody if they wanted to do a low carbohydrate diet, it was that resource. It's yeah. just not now, which is unfortunate, but um, yeah. Yeah, it's just a different idea. Um, and, and on that note, again, talking about dopamine and food addiction, um, I love these topics and I really wanted to explore that with you. Um, yeah. But first, can, can you explain why a carnivore diet, although it seems like a fad, is actually nowhere near a fad? Can you talk about that? That's the, the one food that we ate for 99.99% .99 of our existence as a species here on earth. This is what human beings ate. This is what really made us humans. When we first started eating meat, the rate of evolution was supercharged. And then when we learned how to control fire and cook the meat, we were able to extract even more nutrients from the meat. And that led to an even greater explosion in our evolution. And this is why we're no longer uh, chimpanzees or apes or primates. And now we are at the top of the food chain, mainly because of the rate of uh, our intelligence, how fast our brains grew in size and you know complexity. 
and meat is what meat and cooked meat is what allowed us to do that so um it, it's like looking at a lion and and telling them that hey you shouldn't be eating meat as you're just eating one from one food group like that's what lions eat you give them something else and it's animal abuse but we just got so confused as humans as to what our optimal human diet is because there's just so much money to be made from peddling drugs in the form of carbohydrates and addictive foods, natural flavors, all that kind of stuff, sugars, you know, and then the combination is even worse because just eating carbs, there are studies that show, and it's funny, there's a study that was, um, they talked about it on Diet Doctor and the researcher, the study showed, clearly showed that eating things like oatmeal, rice, pasta, muffins, activates the dopamine release it's addictive the length to which that researcher when she was being interviewed on diet doctor <laughs> with a youtube video the length she went to avoid saying the word addiction just blew my mind you know and so <laughs> this the studies are there but everybody is so afraid to say it because a lot of dietitians and a lot of researchers if they're working within the system to keep their job they cannot go against the grain you know it's, it's just that's the mouth that feeds this whole industry the health experts the nurses the everything the, the doctors the hospitals you know so yeah yeah, yeah. okay so at. very interesting now I, I i hope that the listener didn't miss this but when you said carbohydrates you used the word drug and i think that might catch a lot of people off like drugs are cocaine and heroin and the mm. things we know we shouldn't be doing and you know yeah. whatever but they might not associate with something that's in every food seemingly as let actually me, a drug let me say something when i say drug or anything addictive doesn't always mean that you shouldn't be doing it because when people people have this association this negative association with addiction there's anything that releases too much dopamine in the brain and uh, is very pleasurable all of a sudden is an addiction it's yeah but that does not necessarily mean it's a negative addiction there are such things as positive addictions and addiction truly the like the longer i study it the more i realize addiction is simply untapped potential people who have a lot of potential in them and deep down they know it but they're not getting after it your brain, an addict's brain, requires a lot more stimulation to be happy, as opposed to somebody who doesn't struggle with addiction. They just tend to be happy with less. They're like, you know, they wake up, they go to the beach, life is great, fantastic. They don't have issues with that. A brain like mine, I'm going to be like, for me to be happy, I have to be accomplishing and accomplishing and accomplishing and doing stuff and then another, you know? And so normally when you look at people who have achieved like tons of stuff in their lives, they tend to have an addict's brain, but they just learned that you, they can satisfy it in a constructive way as opposed to in a damaging way by uh, getting hooked on things like cocaine or heroin or food or video games or sex or shopping or anything like that. And so it's not, it's not about being afraid of releasing all this dopamine it's about what is the focus of your dopamine release where, where are you pointing that weapon to yeah interesting so what would be some of the positive addictions then would that be being very productive creation that kind of thing exactly being you know creative accomplished getting after your dreams not, not living below your potential 